All right, so we're not kicking a football here. This is a potato gun. So have you guys seen a potato gun? You know what I'm talking about? You take some like pipe, PVC pipe might work. So when you make it big enough that you can just barely stuff a potato in there, and then you do a combustion reaction at the other end and it launches the potato out. You can definitely get them to go pretty far. So I'm gonna launch this potato out of a potato gun with a velocity of 98 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. And we're launching it at this building here. And this building is 200 meters away. And the question is, how high up the building does the potato hit it? So somewhere, you know, and I don't know if we hit it before the apex or after the apex, we don't have to worry about that just yet, but we're gonna hit this some height up the building. That's where the potato's gonna hit. We wanna calculate that. So in this case, I've used numbers that are nice and convenient here. If we look at again at that 98 meters per second, at an angle of 30 degrees, what is my x component again? A yeah, so it's 98 cosine 30, which we already solved was 84.9 meters per second. So, and the y component? Good, 98 times sine of 30, which just happens to equal 49 meters per second. Great, so I'm using numbers we already know, it's kind of shorten this problem down a little bit. Uh, in this case, let's look at the x and let's look at the y. In the x direction, acceleration, yes or no? Nope, no acceleration, what's the only equation we got? Delta x equals vt. In the y direction, acceleration, yes or no? Mm -hmm. Yep, we got uniform acceleration due to? Gravity. Great. So we got a whole host of equations we might use. Now, does the journey of this potato end because of the motion happening in the horizontal or vertical direction? Horizontal. We're hitting the building in the horizontal direction. Great. So assuming it goes far enough, I mean, we're making an assumption here that this thing isn't going to land before the building. If we're wrong, we'll find that out along the way. So, but if it does indeed hit the building, it does end due to our horizontal direction, so that's what we're gonna use to find time. Great. So in this case, if we wanna find time, it's delta x over v, all in the x direction. In this case, our horizontal displacement's 200 meters. So, and our horizontal velocity was 84.9 meters per second. How long does it take before we hit that building? Good, 2.36 seconds. Now that I know the time, now we can answer the, any question they throw at us, including how high up the building do we hit it? Maybe I should have made that in red to kind of go with my color scheme here, whatever. All right, so in this case, what are we actually trying to solve for? What variable? Delta Y, displacement in the Y direction. What equation do you want to try and use? So you want to try and use the second one? So we got V initial T plus one half A T squared. So in this case, do we know the initial velocity in the Y direction? We do. Do we know the time? Yeah. Do we know the acceleration? Great choice. Why wouldn't I want to use my favorite equation in this one? I'd have to find the final velocity, which we don't know. We could figure that out, but it'd be two twice as long a calculation. I like this as myself as well. So in this case, delta Y, what's our initial velocity again? 49 meters per second, time 2.36 seconds, plus one half. What's my acceleration? And time of 2.36 seconds. Now we got a problem if this is all I do. So, oh, good call, that's one of the problems. And I always do that, by the way, thanks for the catch. But what's the other problem? Yeah, why do I gotta make this negative? Yeah, velocity is pointing up the entire journey here, at least this part. Initial velocity points up, gravity points down. I better be careful with my signs. They point in opposite directions. And can anybody get me an answer here? Cool, 88.35 meters. 
Sometimes they'll give you a question like this and they'll tell you how tall the building is and then they'll go back and ask you, did it hit the building? Did it go over the building? Well, in this case, obviously I figured out it would hit at a height of 88.35 meters. So if this building was shorter than that, well then obviously it went over the building, so on and so forth. But in this case, we just found out 88, and I'll round it to 0.4 here, 88.4 meters up the building is where the potato hits. So if the building was shorter and it went over, could they ask you how, when, where did it hit? Yeah, they could go back and ask you where it landed, it which is, but no, well, they could ask you the distance and stuff like that, how far range. So, but notice in that kind of a question, is that any different than the projectile motion question we just did a little bit ago? No, there's just a building in the middle that we went over, but no difference calculation wise whatsoever. But you have to realize that. Right, so you do something like this and then realize, oh, I guess I gotta do the other calculation and go from there. <laughs>